Hey everyone, welcome to Matt's Garage. Today we're doing a uh, ball joint installation onto your Dana 44 front knuckles. Um, I can't find a lot of good videos of it out there. It seems like they're either poorly lit or they're shaky or there's music in the background. I'm going to do this with a press. You can, and I do have one of these tools. I'm just going to try to do it in the press is my preference. I uh, feel it's just a little more controlled and easy. Um, the videos I've seen where they use that C-clamp, they actually put the top ball joint in first because they say you can't do the bottom one. I'm not really sure how that logic works, but just keep that in mind. You figure it out. I'm not telling you to do it that way. You just need to think it through. Um, you're going to need um, some of the sleeves that come with that C-clamp kit and the adapters and dies to get around the ball joint stem. And uh, yeah, I'm using the ball joint, complete ball joint kit from Tom's Bronco Parts. The uh, part number's in the bottom. You know, gotta love Tom's. I ordered two things from them this week, one on Monday, one on Tuesday. They both came two days later. It's fantastic. Um, they have all your needs. Seems like a really high quality ball joint. And uh, what I like about it is there's a Zerk fitting at the bottom. So these are, these are nice. Um, when you get your ball joints, you gotta get a, a screwdriver and just gently pry up the uh, the um, dust boot and then the purpose of that is your die slips over and sits right on this this ledge and that's what you're putting pressure on and obviously you got to take the zerk fitting out for the install and then put it back so I'm gonna, this is the top I'm gonna do the bottom first then the top uh, bottoms are similar you take the dust boot off and you take this snap ring off Okay, and then you want to put a, a good amount of grease both on the snap ring and on your lower, uh, what do you call it, bore, and then this is how it's going to go in to the bottom. The, the orientation doesn't matter on this one because the Zerk fitting points straight down. Okay, here is my stack up. It's uh, essentially the, uh, the ball joint itself, the sleeve, the die. A, um, I'm using a non-hardened, an impact socket. Uh, to make to reach the difference you're really not supposed to use these for this purpose but I don't really have anything else and then another die from that C-clamp kit uh, just to make sure that that you don't get interference tight here okay I've got pressure ball joints going nice and smooth so far just monitor it make sure it doesn't it doesn't go cockeyed Okay, and that's bottom. Well, it wasn't long before I ran into my first slat, uh, snag. So you can see here, when you, there's no way to get the snap ring in. Zero. Now I machined the bottom a little bit on this one. I still can't quite get it. So I'm gonna hit it with a grinder and take off a little more material. And apparently this is very common. I'm just pressing it back off. I've got a little cup underneath to catch it. I machined down, a, I made like a dummy, like a setup uh, one out of my old one. You can see I'm sort of good on this side. I need to take more off that side. There it is. I guess I shouldn't have painted my knuckles, huh? Boom. I should emphasize this is totally optional. The weight of the vehicle should keep the ball joint or the knuckle down. I just, I just want to do it. For the uppers, it's a pretty similar story. Take the Zerk fitting off, obviously. And you want to clock this to whatever the final position you want to service it. But you don't want it to hit anything, so. There's the Zerk hole, and put it right about there, All right? Don't forget you got a nice zerk fitting on the bottom here. You don't want to 
screw that up. So that goes over there. That goes over there. That's the upper. Both ball joints are on. All right, that's that side. Great. Okay, now keep in mind with these right means passenger. Not correct. So you get that goes in there. Get the bottom in. Okay, now all these ball joint kits come with this threaded insert. Okay, that's part of the system now. These are non consent or um, non eccentric. Okay, they're just regular. But they make eccentric ones if you want to um, if you want to adjust your camber. Camber? Caster? Camber. Tighten the, tighten the uh, bottom down fully. What's happening is the ball joint is just spinning. This tool offered by Tom's is designed to tighten that threaded insert down. You might need to take a file and clearance this this uh, nut to fit uh, this tool. Alright, that's seated all the way around. Now that I have these machined or, you know, modified to work, I'm just going to put a dab of uh, anti-seize on it. Make sure you don't get it on the internal surface, just the outside. Oh yeah. Now we got some torque. So one inch. You're basically setting preload on the top ball joint, so you go until you hit the torque spec. Okay guys, so um, once I got it past a certain point, I'm able to put torque on it. The specs say 80 foot-pounds for the bottom. It seems a little high to me. What do you guys think? Because I am no expert at this. 80 is a lot. Okay, that's 80. And this just feels a little tight. I mean, okay, so. I can't put like a weight on that, but it feels like about. Um, Feels like I'm putting about 40 pounds, and I think you're only supposed to be putting like 26. Okay, and then it says for the adjuster nut, you go to 50. Okay, that's 50. See, that's that's ridiculous. That can't possibly be right. That's probably more correct. I guess normally there's a wheel on it, but normally these things just flop around. You know, you don't want to put too much stress on your power steering. Castle nut. This is the one I don't think I have a wrench to fit. Oh no, I do. This is assembled, that's how you assemble it, but I've got way too much drag on this thing. So, somebody tell me what I'm doing wrong. I just did the other side, same thing, really tight. How tight is too tight? 
Okay guys, that was how to install your upper and lower ball joints on a Dana 44, as well as how to install them onto your C, your outer C's. Um, just to wrap up, as I said, I've got this issue where now that I have it on, I didn't even come close to torquing it to the specs they said, and that's the tightness that one's at. And this one's about as tight, if not a little tighter. So let me let me know what you guys think. My guess is that once it breaks in, it'll loosen up, so I should just leave it tight. But yeah, I don't know. I'm sure you guys have done it. Let me know in the comments below, and uh, see you next time on Matt's Garage.